Hey, this is Atman Parmar, and I'm going to talk about karma clearance in non-religious way. Well, a lot of people associate karmas with some religious belief, and that may be true. What I'm going to talk about is something that is based on my career as a regression therapy teacher, a radical founder, and my clinical experience as a homeopath. Well, so... Karma can mean different things to different people in different culture, but more or less everybody thinks that karma is all about suffering. I differ. Karma does cause suffering, but a few of them. Let me explain to you what karmas are. Karmas are the eventual effect of regret, guilt, incompletions, oaths, vows, and curses. And when we deal with them, you more or less rise beyond the need for suffering. So what are the gifts? Gifts are generated when you think that you shouldn't have done and you did it. Now the guilt could be at the soul level, at the subconscious mind level, or at the conscious level. The conscious level guilt is because of all our morals and conditionings that's been taught to us that this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. This should be done, this should not be done. And based on that, we feel guilty. <clears throat> there are certain guilts at the subconscious mind level. You didn't even know that you felt guilty. But when you regress or go deeper into your subconscious mind, you get in touch with your guilt. And there are some guilts which are soul level guilts that is carried forward even before birth. Now, some of the gifts are even pre-programmed guilt. That is something that we realize when a person regresses and goes into some story, which appears to be a like a past life. We call it past life pre-programming. It doesn't have to be with your own rebirth because you can borrow the story by connecting to the collective consciousness as per your need. So we collectively call all the stories pre-programming and there's a reason why we borrow certain pre-programming or carry forward certain pre-programming. All that may not be discussed right now because it requires much deeper understanding and much higher awareness. To cut it short, we have certain pre-programming and that's why triplets are different or twins are different or quadruplets are different in spite of being born in the same family at the same time under same socioeconomic conditions, right? So they all have come with their own pre-programming. And that that itself can be a karma for you. Okay. There are certain karmas which are inherited karmas. We inherit them through ancestors. And you see a certain pattern in certain families like a young, uh, the first child of the family go through certain patterns or women in the family go through certain patterns or, um, or there are certain diseases which are not genetic and still they tend to appear in your family pretty often. And they can be karmas. Okay. Talking about regret, they're slightly different from gifts. So regret is about I could have done and I did not do. And then there is a tendency to overdo, to compensate for what you did not do in the past. And regret leads to further action in the now or in the future. For example, I didn't study when I should have studied. Now you spend the whole life trying to study. Or I was not keeping my house clean. Now you get obsessed about keeping your house clean even when there's sickness, there's a need to keep cleaning it. Or I did not feed my child well. Now there's an obsession about feeding the child. So that, that is born out of regret. Incompletions. Incompletions are things not done earlier. And I wish I could have done. So that feeling that I did not do it uh, and I could have done it, that adds to the further... Uh, complications and then there is a desire to complete the incompletion. So guilt, regret and incompletion. 
sums up for most of the karmas. Now, incompletions can also be from the parents, okay? Sometimes it's not yours, but a parental incompletions. Your father couldn't become a doctor and you were forced to be a doctor. Your mother couldn't study and you were forced to study. It's mother's incompletion. You chose to complete and fulfill. However, that's also karma, correct? Some of the karmas are because of the oaths, vows, and curses. These are strong, powerful words uttered by authority figures in a very tender moment when you were vulnerable and probably you got influenced by them. Words like, you will never get happy. You will never find peace. You will never enjoy your life ever again. You know, this happens occasionally, the parting word when you're separating from your loved ones or, uh, you know, you're hurting somebody and those words come out pretty often and they, are, they, they become a curse for you. Some of the curses, you give it to yourself. Some of the curses, you borrow from ancestors. And some of the curses, you bring it forward from your past life pre-programming. These are strong words and the remedial solution can be in form of another statement, which is a remedial statement because uh, the words only can counteract other words. We'll talk about the statements a little later. Another one is oaths. I will always be with my child, come what may. Now that becomes oath. To an extent, the child cannot go to the hostel, the child cannot get married uh, and that child never grows up because you have a tendency to make that child as a child all the time and you wonder why your child is so dependent but it's you who has taken that kind of oath. There's so many such cases I can discuss on and on but in general when, when you say I will always do that and when you say it in a tender moment you feel committed and you land up doing that all the time. And promises work in the same way. We make so many promises, but not all promises affect, but when you, you've you been totally aligned with your heart and soul while giving this promise, you bind yourself to those words, based on those words, and you remain committed based on that. When you break those commitments, you feel very guilty, and that affects you further. Now, when I'm describing it, it sounds so easy. When you start working, it will sound still more easy. What we do is, we first help you declutter your mind and ease your emotions. If you're very guilty and um, if you're full of regret, if you're full of incompletions, there's going to be a lot of emotional charge. And if you haven't really forgiven yourself, you're going to keep punishing yourself and invite more and more suffering and suffering adds to further emotional charge. We have to break this pattern somewhere. Help yourself with emotional charge. We will show you how easily you can do that with few of the simple radical statements. It's very easy to do that though. It does take time, it requires persistence, it requires to be consistent. However, you can ease your emotional charge. As you ease your emotional charge, you can start easily bridging your conscious mind with the subconscious mind and that's where you start getting information about a lot of such oaths, vows, promises, the memory is stored in your subconscious mind. Now as you start practicing further you bridge your conscious mind with the subconscious mind and the superconscious mind and you start getting guidance like a card would through their GPS connectivity. It's possible to have your personalized GPS connectivity and connect to understand what's the guidance. Now, all karmas are not meant for suffering. They carry a lot of learning for you. They carry a lot of gift for you. You should not manipulate and change all of them unless you have learned what you need to learn and accept the gift as per the plan. Once you connect with the superconscious mind, you get clarity on learning as well as the gift. And when you embrace the gift and complete your learning, karmas, 
become null and void. That's a way to go about non-religious working out of karma. In short, karma can be cleared with due awareness and few of the radical statements. The beginning can happen with a simple karma clearance course, which is 15 days, part one course, which is offered free, along with the radical membership. The classic membership is the baseline membership, which you get uh, an access to the app, a lot of other facilities, a lot of healing techniques, videos, and guidance, and the course on karma clearance. And also you get the help from the mentor if you ask for. I'm going to start a fresh batch from 15th of August. Do join. You will find the link in the description. And why is this batch very precious or special? Is because I'm going to address you for 15 days after that. So being with me for 15 days, and I'm going to guide you step by step through your karma clearance. And that will bring about a major shift in your life. If you choose to discontinue before that, the minimum amount that you pay for classic membership also will be refunded. And the course will be absolutely free for you. We want you to be regular, we want you to be committed, we want you to be, be sincere about your karma clearance. And that's why a small little token amount you need to pay just before enrolling, which is refundable, should you choose to withdraw before that. We wish you all the best. Find the link, do enroll as soon as possible. We're looking at having you online and all the best. Enjoy a very happy and blessed life. This is Arpan Parman, uh, founder of Radical. I've been a homeopath for 15 years, and then I practiced regression therapy, taught regression therapy and hypnosis in several countries. And that's how I got connected with the knowledge of metaphysics and learned how to connect the conscious mind with the superconscious mind in very easy and effective way. And that's what I teach in a curriculum called Spiritual Solution. Karma Clearance is level zero of the Spiritual Solution curriculum. There's a way to go and it's a beautiful journey inward to restore the joy and happiness in life. Thank you so much.